the Amazon ranking algorithm is not just a, a look back, a single look back period for ranking. So it's it's performance times relevancy. Yeah, you, you say Helium 10 for a long time, they were the best. Um, who's the best now? Oh, it's us, man. I mean, <laughs> we're, it, I, it's, it's tough to, you know, I, I'm, I'm extremely biased here, obviously. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of That Amazon Ads Podcast. We have a very special guest with us today. We have the founder CEO of Data Dive, Brandon Young, joining us today. Excited to pick your brain, sir. How are you doing? Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, we're, we're super fortunate to have you here. We're also joined by Steven, as always. How are you doing, Steven? Doing well, Andrew, but I realize every single time we have a guest on, we always say a very special guest. But this one and, is really special. Yeah, this one's really special. <laughs> it truly is. And and also we only have very special guests on. We don't we don't do we don't bring nobodies on the show. No offense to anybody who hasn't been able to get on our show despite the request. But anyways, that's probably sounded rude. Anyways, Brandon, <laughs> yeah, Data Dive. I think a lot of people know who Data Dive is. Your LinkedIn post and people have been posting about Data Dive. The screenshots primarily of the rank radar, uh, which is really cool that I think has garnered a lot of attention for your tool, but, but obviously your tool does a lot more than just that. So why don't you give us kind of the quick, maybe 60 second summary of what your tool is and and maybe even like how it even came came into existence. Yeah, so I mean, as sellers for the last, you know, nine plus years, uh, we started selling actually in 2015 and then our own brands 2016. And we've always used data to make decisions uh, from product research, product validation. And I found that uh, keyword tracking was super important. And it's been that way for, for many years for optimization, for understanding what, the, what levers you're pulling and how it impacts your organic ranks. And so our PPC strategy has always been that primary uh, goal should be organic ranking. And, um, you know, so I've, as I was looking at the keyword tracker and I was thinking about, okay, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing things over here in PPC and then I'm trying to get some reports over here. I want to know, can I spend more money on a keyword? Uh, should I spend more money on a keyword? So I'm looking at impression reports. And so when we were rethinking uh, how we're going to build a keyword tracker, I, you know, I really was adamant with my team around, we need to just put it all together. And, um, Luckily, my co-founder, uh, Florian, is just a brilliant, um, you know, uh, engineer and, and, and really good with putting a team together. So we were able to get some, some, uh, some reports put together that basically that's what Rank Radar is. It, it breaks down your PPC performance, your impression share versus your competitors, how you're targeting those keywords, and then shows you the keyword ranking over time. So you really start to understand where to spend more money, where to spend less money, uh, where you're having indexing issues, for example. Um, yeah, and, and and where you're having conversion issues too, where you need to address those. And it creates a very simple process and SOP for my team to follow that may not speak, uh, you know, the uh, the lang English as a first language. I mean, most of my team is in China, actually. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's really cool. So, I mean, as a user of Data Dive, I've obviously gotten to benefit uh, from this this keyword rank tracking view that you put together. It's super helpful and effective for tracking and seeing how those ad dollars that you're deploying and spending on are actually making an impact to you know getting more organic visibility for for your product. So, super awesome portion of the tool. I use it all the time. Um, I'm curious. So, with a lot of other keyword and SEO related softwares like already in existence for Amazon sellers, what gaps in the market did you feel like you could make a difference in? And where did you feel like you could compete and actually build something better than the current solutions that already exist? Yeah, so for many years, we started teaching in 2018. I mean, we were in beta in 2017 with Seller Systems. And then in 2018, we really started teaching the course. And even from that time, very, very early time, we were taking data from Seller Labs, I remember like mashing data together from viral launch and seller labs and doing like a manual or reverse ASIN to try to figure out the search volume and what keywords were relevant and where the ranks were. 
And then Cerebro came out with Helium 10, and I was like, it's cool, but it's only one at a time, and we got to mash it together. And then they they opened it up to 10 competitors. But even then, it was, it's so much data, and a lot of it is useless, right? So it's like kind of trying to figure out how to filter through the new noise. So we spent many years teaching a methodology where we would have all of our users, all the students and all the members that we were teaching use a Helium 10 account go pull a Cerebro uh, report and then create a column where we would calculate relevancy and then filter out all the keywords that no one was really ranked for because those are just irrelevant, right? And then kind of sort that by which keywords were the most important. All of, Doing the, all of that manually each time takes a long time, right? And so uh, when we built Data Dive, we figured, you know, the thesis was, okay, we could do that automatically. We could save you an hour worth of work to do it in five minutes, right? And then you can you can analyze more products, you can make better decisions. Um, not only that, you can just start to pull more and more data. Uh, if you're gonna audit, if you're gonna calculate certain things, you can just do more. So that's kind of where Data Dive came about was that the data being provided by someone like Helium 10 at the time, and I mean they're the biggest in the space. Uh, you know, they for a long time they they were the best and. And we just still had to do so much to analyze the data to make real decisions from it. And that's that's why we created Data Dive. It's, it, it takes all of that data and feeds it to you in a way that you can understand how are the current sellers getting their sales, which keywords drive the most um, the most sales for, for my competition, and what, what are the gaps? What are they doing poorly so that I can potentially do better? So that delta becomes an opportunity in a lot of ways for product selection. Uh, and we're always trying to figure out how, how we can uh, display it in a slightly better way, but data is data's tough, man. Data, data, there's a lot of it, and it's very tough sometimes for people to, to really understand it. So I think we're doing an all right job, and we're going to con- continue to improve on it. Yeah you, yeah, you say Helium 10 for a long time. They were the best. Um, who's the best now? Oh, it's us, man. I mean, we're, <laughs> it, I, it's, it's tough to, you know, I, I'm, I'm extremely biased here, obviously, but I think we're best in class when it comes to keyword research and SEO, um, you know, or optimization, I, um, I, everything from our data, the way we look at it, the way we value it, the way we've written our own algorithms to value keywords and roots and, and really help you write listings to maximize rank. I, I think we just, we'd be built on a foundation that they, that they created and it was very helpful for us building our own brands. Uh, but I think that we've taken it to another level. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I discovered you guys and I would agree with you, by the way, I, I do think, I mean, I'm a long-term Helium 10 user. I still do use them because I really like the the Chrome plugin. I know you guys have a Chrome plugin, but I think it's a little different function compared to the Helium 10 one. Um, but I discovered you guys through LinkedIn posts, people showing that you're tracking a specific product keyword rank over time. Andrew then was also testing you guys out and was really, it was like, this is awesome. So I was like, all right, fine, fine, I'll do it. Um, but I needed it in particular because I had a brand where their organic sales basically completely just fell off the map. Uh, were not discoverable at all on page one, largely due to just massive increased competition that was selling the same products at 50% cheaper, all of, all of you know, the, the Chinese manufacturers basically going D to C as everyone is aware of. So my advice to the brand was we need to run some deals to boost that rank, to give us another opportunity to get back onto the, to the top and, you know, to demonstrate that it works. How are we going to do that? You could use helium 10, but it's not going to give you that same visual and map that data dive gives you that kind of that heat map, that massive spreadsheet looking thing. And that was the view that we wanted. So, you know, we picked our products, we, we, I think it was like five products across 20 keywords. And we looked at the before, during, and after the, the deal period. And very, very clearly, you see that heat map was in the red saying really low rank, jumps up to like the yellow green saying pretty good rank. And then after the deal ended, we, we hovered around like the yellow orange range. So we maintained some of the rank and were net better off compared to the before period after generating some additional sales momentum and volume. So it was a great case study for us to demonstrate the effectiveness of deals that I don't know how else we could have done that without data dive. hundred percent. Yeah. I did a whole masterclass on how deals can impact rank over time and why it's important. And it really comes down to the fundamentals of understanding how Amazon's ranking algorithm works and how conversion is like a leading indicator there. Mm -hmm. So when you run a deal, um, 
you know, assuming you can run the traffic to it and get aggressive with the traffic, your conversion rate is going to be significantly higher than it typically, it typically is when you're not running right. a deal. And so the key though, is that the algorithm, the, the, this is, this is the one thing I'll share that I think is really important is that, uh, the Amazon ranking algorithm is not just a, a look back, a single look back period for ranking. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's performance times relevancy. When you have an indexing issue, when you're tracking your keywords and you're like, you're off, off the charts, you're not indexing at all. Generally it's because you didn't write your listing properly to establish a high relevancy for that keyword. And the highest relevancy is exact match written in your, in your listing, right? In highest ranking juice would be front of title, for example, and then it goes down into other places from there. So there's a lot of, a lot that goes into that, but just assuming that your relevancy is there, um, and the, what, what matters after relevancy will be performance. And that's going to be click through rate, conversion rate, and your, your revenue. Now you can sell a higher price product that converts worse and still rank pretty, pretty close because of the way that that's balanced. But if it's a single look back period, it'll be like, well, whoever did the best yesterday is ranking the highest. They can't do that. Obviously they need to, they need to give credit for people that are consistent. So what they do is they have a one day average, a three day average, a seven day average, a 15 day average, a 30 day average, and then goes back even further from that two, three, four, six months, right? The further back you go, the less it's weighted. So the older history isn't weighted as much as the newer history, which is good. So it gives you a chance to kind of climb out if you've started to do something better and right uh, more recently so you can see your ranks improve. But this is one of the, re the, this is one of the reasons uh, that if you're out of stock for more than 30 days, it's very difficult to get your ranks back because you're accumulating negative history throughout that 30 days. And all of those averages, the one day average, the three day, the seven, the 15, the 30 are all zeros, right? And now you have to kind of start all over. Um, now, that 30 day average is like the magic mark for deals to be effective. So if you run a deal in one month and then wait five weeks and run another deal, it's not gonna have nearly the same impact as if you run a deal and then within 30 days run another deal. So the biggest thing that I'll tell that, that I'll, that I'll show, and I, I even went through and I found a ton of examples of competitors that are in very, very competitive niches where they run regular deals. So you can pull up a keep a chart and you can kind of see where they run a, a lightning deal. And you'll see the ones that, uh, for the first deal or two, you'll see a small bump and then it goes back up to like a, a baseline a BSR, right? Assuming that that's probably impacting keyword ranks, like it does, it impacts keyword ranks to get more impressions. And that's why the BSR stays lower for a period of time. But then your keyword ranks will slide back to where they were because that's your equilibrium. That's where your average conversion rate and your performance is relative to your competition. Assuming again, that relevancy is the same for everybody. Now, what the key though, is that if you run a deal and then you, you get that lower, uh, that lower BSR for a period of time, and then it starts to run back. If you run another deal before that 30 day period, you're getting a blended average of conversion rate from both deals in there. And now you'll, you'll see a, a, an even a longer dip and a longer period of time. And so it generally take three, four, five deals consistently running inside of a 30 day window, and you will start to set new floors for your BSR which is, which is uh, the magic of using BSR or using deals to, to rank over time and stay ahead. So then once you get ahead and you're in the lead, you continue to do that, not so much to keep pushing the rank down because you, you will hit a ceiling, right? But the, uh, the goal would be then to starve your competitors because while your deal is running, their, their, their conversion rates go in the wrong direction. Mm. Yeah, very well said. I mean, it almost sounds like Amazon's algorithm is like, like a credit score. It's like if you you know, you're out of stock for 30 days, that's going to live on your, your credit score for, you know, a very long time. It's, you know, if you miss a payment, it's going to stay on there for a long time. Yeah. Um, you do get so, punished for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's so interesting too. I mean, I've always heard like the laddering of deals being really a, an effective way to stimulate ranking and growth. And I think you really laid it out there really articulately and, and explained some of the nuance there within how you might actually break out those deals and, and time them appropriately. What would you say to somebody who is uh, coupon or deal resistant or hesitant? Like somebody who's not using any deals, would you say that there's still some, you know, ability to rank with through other means or is coupons I mean, I, gonna I would, be Yeah, I mean, important? I would ask them why they're resistant to it. I think that, you know, everything's A-B testing. Coupons aren't gonna always be effective, but they are effective more than they're not. And and the, the reason to use coupons specifically 
is that it doesn't impact your lowest selling price for the last 30 days, which is where you need to have a baseline for when you run a deal. Because when you run a lightning deal, they're going to request that you have a 20% discount or a, a minimum discount amount. Same thing when you run prime exclusive deals for prime day, which is coming up, for example. Um, you have to have your established lowest selling price for the last X days. Sometimes it's 30 days, sometimes it's 60 days, whatever. And um, if you lower your price without a coupon, you're effectively lowering what that price is. And so your deal price has to be significantly lower. But you can kind of, and it's not as effective as just lowering your price or running a sale and, you know, but if you run a sale and add a coupon, but keep the price, the effective price higher and just use a bigger coupon, you're going to see an increase in conversion rates and click through rate. And, uh, but then you're also in a position where you can still run those deals every, every X amount of weeks. Right. And, and, yeah. uh, yeah, I think coupons and deals are effective for a lot of categories and products. It really depends what your competition's doing, what your conversion rate is. And you have to, uh, you have to know how to do it effectively. Otherwise, if you just run a random lightning deal every once in a while, you're just lighting money on fire most of the time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just have some, some clients that are very resistant to running any sort of coupons to actually stimulate growth or rank. And it's something we're kind of like pushing on them, trying to get them to do a little bit here and there. But uh, some brands are just very adamant about maintaining that price integrity and that, that brand image, I guess. Um, so uh, well, what they should do is probably run an evergreen coupon and probably raise their price a little bit. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, like a, an evergreen, an evergreen sales and coupon strategy will, will generally, because it stands out more also in search, right? So in the, in the SERP, like you're going to see all of the different, uh, results and, and the things that catch people's eyes are the cross outs and the mm -hmm. badges and, you know, the coupons. And so if you don't have those things and everyone else does, you're just getting less clicks. It's just what it is. Like it, it's, there's so much data on that. And if they're yeah. hiring you as the expert, they need to trust you that, you know, you're going to be like, look, I can't guarantee this is going to work, but this is true. This, this works most of the time. So let's, let's test some things out. Like we've, ads and, and Amazon are all about just constantly throwing shit at the wall and testing it because it's it, it's going to be different almost all the time. Yeah. A Andrew and I have worked on a couple premium brands with really high AOVs that don't like those discounts because they think it's bad for the brand image. And we tell them, you're selling on Amazon. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, if even if you're, yeah. if you're selling like Patek Philippe, for example, and if people are going to go into the store, yeah, they're walking into your brick and mortar. You're not going to discount it. But if they're shopping on Amazon for Patek Philippe, like they they're either they have so much money that they don't care if it's a if it's like a if it's a not a good product or whatever, right? Or right, right. they're intentionally trying to find a cheap deal on it and seeing a, a coupon or whatever is going to make them excited, you know. If you happen to work for Patek Philippe and can get me a hookup, I'm uh, like, let me know what I need to do. <laughs> yeah. And if you need help managing your ads, Patek Philippe, let us know too. We can do the PPC. We'll work oh for watches. <laughs> I might just be a, a dumb Midwesterner, but uh, I don't even know what that is. So <laughs> don't, don't ever look it up or worry about it. Like it'll lead you down a rabbit hole of becoming into getting into watches. And uh, that's, that's oh. a dirty habit. My yeah, wife's not a, a big fan of slippery it. slope. Yeah, if you thought if you thought Rolex was the most I'm expensive watch today, in the though. world, oh, there you go. And yeah. if you thought Rolex was the most expensive watch, then that means you're poor because you don't know okay. about Patek Philippe. Nice. I'm just kidding. I just learned about Patek Philippe like a couple months ago myself. So okay, I'm poor. cool. I don't feel as bad about it. <laughs> oh. oh, cool. Um, so, so Brandon, I mean, you you kind of started to break into a little bit and telling us some of the formula, some of the some of the secret sauce to actually what makes rank move. Um, it was funny, Stephen brought up, you know, having like a Excel spreadsheet view of your keyword rank tracker. I actually, before I discovered data dive, I had an assistant who was going through downloading helium 10 keyword trackers, V look up in the ranks for every single keyword into the spreadsheet and basically created the exact same, uh, spreadsheet that, that, that you have in the rank radar. It's pretty cool. But anyway, so when I saw it, I was like, this is perfect. I, I, know, um, I, I know without exaggeration, probably thousands of sellers that do the same exact thing. And it's, you know, yeah, as soon as they discover data dive, they, they, they breathe a sigh of release, or the relief. They're like, okay, yeah. now, now, now I don't need to pay that extra cost and, and it's done regularly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There is another way. Um, so anyway, just if you could just, you've looked at so much data, 
around ranking, around keyword rankings and things like that. If you could just share a little bit about some of the, the levers that are primarily the most important to driving rank. We had another guest on, Carly McMillan, who was, we, we kind of termed it, we called it the happiness index. She said that, you know, ranking is primarily driven by does this product make Amazon happy and the customer happy? And, you know, based on how happy it makes Amazon and the customer, you know, the, the, uh, that would dictate rank. But I know you're a lot more into data. So maybe we can put some facts to, to uh, some of our assumptions around this. Yeah, I mean, as I said, it, like happiness, I guess, can be broken down into Amazon getting clicks because they like, they like clicks. It, it makes them money, uh, you know, and, and then getting add to carts and conversions, right? So there are, there are actions that happen that can impact your rank versus your competition. So that's why click-through rate is a, is a thing. Uh, conversion rate is probably the biggest driver of all of the metrics, but you also need to make sure your relevancy. So I'll talk, I'll talk briefly about relevancy because I think not enough people understand it uh, or pay enough attention to it. Because when you look at a pool of keywords that you want to build into your listing, a lot of people kind of mix and match them together and try to throw like five keywords into one in like five words. Because they're like, oh, all the words are there and they're mixed up. And so I'm getting credit for all seven or 10 of these keywords. And that's great. I'm smart. The problem is that the match type matters a lot for how much credit you get when there's an action and for your ranking potential. So, um, and your uh, relevancy score. So I'll give you an idea. You got two products that each have the same score of or one has a score of a, a thousand based on performance. Let's, I'm making up numbers just to kind of make an example here. But you've got a score of a thousand, but your relevancy score is 0.5. It's 0.5 because you only have a broad match written in your listing. Uh, and what that means is that if you're selling a diaper bag, you never actually write diaper bag, you just write bags for diapers, right? So you've got like, not only just a broad match in that instance, you've got a plural broad match, which is even worse. So you've got like a really low relevancy score. You're not going to rank despite what everyone says with Amazon tuning out keywords and moving more towards like some uh, semantics. They're not, you're not going to have a perfect uh, relevancy score. So your score of a thousand, your performance score of a thousand times your relevancy score might be 500.5 times a thousand. Someone who performs worse than you lower click-through rate, lower conversion rate, sells less units, can rank higher than you simply because they wrote diaper bag in their title. Uh, they've established a perfect relevancy score and therefore their score is, you know, 600 and it's multiplied by one because they have a perfect relevancy score. Then now they're going to rank ahead of you. Their their score for that keyword is, is 600 versus yours, which is 500. That's, that's, exactly how ranking works and it's those scores over amount over those periods of times blended together but you can unlock so the other way that it works which is really interesting is that you're getting when you when you do cash and performance score it goes into a bank so your relevancy is real time which is really cool so the way it works is that the multiplication of your relevancy is for where you need to rank now like literally right now and if you did a poor job with your relevancy score in the past, it doesn't impact what you can do today. Because what happens is your performance score, that thousand that we gave an example of, that you've been performing well on a keyword has been just sitting in the bank. So that, uh, that over the course of, let's say you were performing worse when you first launched and you had a score of 800 and then it was 900, then it was 1000 and now it's 1100 and your total blended score is 1000 from all those averages. And now... And we're getting into the weeds here, so hopefully I didn't lose like everybody. Um, people are still listening, but we're so we're we're looking at your 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 score that's in the bank now. In order to cash that in, that's where the relevancy comes in. So if you go in and write your listing to unlock it and immediately take your your relevancy score from 0.5 right back to one by writing that keyword in the title in exact form in the maximum ranking juice potential you can now impact your rank immediately. And I've seen in legitimately hundreds and hundreds of case studies where people will rewrite their listing. Just, we don't recommend you rewrite everything unless it's been terrible, but like you rewrite one keyword into the title and you can immediately see an impact in rank from page two, page five, not even indexed to page one. Mm. Um, because the credit was there. So 
when you talk about how ranking works from an algorithmic standpoint and, and how you get credit versus your competition, everything's relative, but that's how they calculate it. Hmm. Awesome. Very interesting. Well, Brandon, we are kind of coming up towards the how long these episodes usually go before uh, people start <laughs> zoning out. So I'm going to uh, start wrapping things up, but I want to do something. I want to play a quick game with you. We've never done this before. So uh, I'm going to read off a list of words, and I want you to give me you know, your knee-jerk reaction, just the first word that comes to mind, a little word association game, and Sounds get an good. idea of, of how you think through some things and and. I don't know. Psychologists do this. So maybe we'll tap into your brain a little bit. You ready? <laughs> yeah. So I say the word fun. and then you respond uh, whatever first comes to mind. All right. Amazon. Bacon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Opportunity. Opportunity. Nice. Data. Uh, massive. Ranking. Calculated. PPC. Expensive. SEO. Yeah. Complicated. Mm, true. Organic sales. Profit. ACOS. Terrible measure. Oh, really? Interesting. Interesting. Andrew and I just did it. Andrew and I just did an episode. <laughs> the, we did a two part series on his ACOS of vanity metric. And uh, we said what, no. What was the conclusion? We said we said if you don't if you don't set up your campaigns right, that it's usually it's usually an issue with um, whether or not you're, you're you've set up the ad sales attribution to be accurate. If your ad sales attribution is not accurate, then yeah, it's it's a pointless metric. But there's ways to make it more accurate. I have to have another whole series about debating that. All right, and okay, well then I'm going to add another one to this list. What about ad cost of total sales or tacos? My favorite, yeah, I, delicious, nice. yeah, delicious. Okay, <laughs> uh, software. Oh, expensive. Mm. To to to, to subscribe build. to or to build? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, ad labs. Unknown. Uh, sound like I need to. I need to uh, look into it. I mean, yeah. from we can give you a demo. And you guys, I understand what you guys know what you're doing. So you've probably built some pretty pretty gnarly tools that I need to check out. Yeah, and I think your tool uses AG Grid, right, for a lot of your tables and everything. I don't even know. So I'm a non tech founder. It's so funny. I was just at the Snowflake conference in San Francisco. I was the dumbest guy in the room for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and there were there were like 40, 40 booths of vendors, and every single one of them, and they all integrate with Snowflake. These are all these data mm -hmm. providers and tools and stuff and i would go okay talk to me like i'm six <laughs> because yeah. i don't i don't understand anything you're saying yeah. and I, I learned a lot that way that was actually a good way to do it but um yeah so when you said ag grid i i have a i don't know what that is okay yeah i think andrew you it's actually been a while since i logged into data dive but it's the same yeah i think it's the same yeah, yeah, whenever I first signed up for Data Dive, I like sent a screenshot to Steven and I was like, look, they're using the same same builder yeah. as us. <laughs> it's it's like the I don't even know what the proper terminology is, but it's like a it's like a package that builds uh tables for for websites and applications and stuff. Oh, it's awesome. very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um I only know that I mean, I'm barely trying to uh I don't I don't code at all. I'm just trying to talk to my own developers and I learn learn a couple keywords along the yeah. way. <laughs> but Brandon, thank you so much for, for coming on. Um, we'd love to let people know where to find you, where to go to sign up for Data Dive. So we'll definitely put the link in for Data Dive uh, in our show notes. But in terms of getting in touch with you, if they have questions, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, they can always reach out to me on Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn is always good as well. Um, I'm, I'm available there. Um, sellersystems.com. You know, you can meet, reach me there. You guys have a discount to give everybody? Uh, for data dive. Would, Otherwise, I'll set one, one up for you if you don't. Yeah. No, we don't That'd have one. Great. Yeah. So what's the what's the we'll, discount? What's the deal? Uh, it'll be at least ten percent, and then buys you a cup of coffee when they sign up. So uh, you know. Oh, and nice. A month after that. Let's go. <laughs> expensive, by the way, is, is it is it a coupon code or we have an affiliate link that will will use? Yeah, it'll be an affiliate link and coupon code, so it'll be both. Okay. Um, perfect. Yeah, and then they they can use your code. They'll get a discount. Uh, nice. We can set it up. Yeah. 
All right, so everyone, awesome. make sure you get that. Andrew and I need coffee, and you guys need 10% off Data Dive. And with that, Andrew, I'll let you add your closing thoughts. If you have any, otherwise, you can ship us out of here. Nah, no closing thoughts. We'll wrap it up here. Everybody, make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you next week on another episode of That Amazon Ads Podcast.